You now have a number of reactions that you've learned, either in Chem 202 or 203, that enable you to transform one functional group into another. These include specific cases of nucleophilic acyl substitution, like ester hydrolysis or Fischer esterification, reduction of carbonyl compounds, and oxidation of alcohols. With these tools, you're now armed to design short, multi-step syntheses. For instance, say you're a perfumery chemist, and you want to test a sample of this aldehyde as a new fragrance, but you only have this carboxylic acid available in your stockroom. At this stage, you don't have any tools or reagents that convert carboxylic acids directly to aldehydes, but you do know how to make aldehydes from the oxidation of primary alcohols with PCC. Are we any closer to our goal? Do we have a reaction that converts carboxylic acids to primary alcohols? Actually, yes. Our super strong hydride reducing agent, lithium aluminum hydride, can perform this reaction. By piecing together the appropriate reactions in sequence, we can design syntheses from particular starting materials. When designing synthesis, you must always be careful to avoid competitive reactions. It's not possible to tell a reagent, do your job just over here, but don't touch this other thing that you could potentially react with. For instance, say I wanted to make this alcohol, which has a ketone over here, from this carboxylic acid. Unfortunately, I can't just throw lithium aluminum hydride at it and hope that only the carboxylic acid reacts. Ketones also react with lithium aluminum hydride, and I can't just tell the reagent to focus on one side of a molecule. Reagents don't listen to us like that. But we can use other reactions we know to circumvent this problem. If we subject this compound to lots of an alcohol, say methanol, with acid catalyst, both the ketone and the carboxylic acid react under those conditions. The ketone becomes an acetal, and the carboxylic acid becomes an ester. Now, if we use lithium aluminum hydride, we can reduce the ester to the desired primary alcohol, and the acetal stays put. Acetals don't react with nucleophiles under basic conditions. Then, once the alcohol is in place, we can hydrolyze the acetal back to the, back to the ketone using H3O+, and voila, we have our desired compound. This strategy is referred to as the protecting group strategy. We've temporarily protected the ketone as an acetal so that we could perform a reaction elsewhere, and then deprotected it at the end of the reaction sequence. To start developing your skill in designing syntheses, it's helpful to organize the tools in your toolbox. What reactions do you know? I suggest organizing your reaction toolbox according to functional group. Make a study sheet for each functional group, and on that sheet list the reactions that functional group can undergo, what can you turn it into, and the reactions that produce that functional group. What can I make it from?